Hey, Elise Pickett here with The Urban Harvest, and I snuck out here today uh, to talk to you all about how to care for a Florida vegetable garden in extreme summer heat. We are well into the summer season, and we're in that cusp of when we should be getting rain, um, we have the hot temperatures, but we haven't been getting the moisture that most of the plants need to compensate for the extreme heat. Regardless of whether the rain is here or not, our summers can be very intense. Not only do we have temperatures that reach well into the 90s, uh, we also have extreme humidity, um, and it's just a very intense heat. So there are a few things to keep in mind over the summer months to help properly care for your Florida vegetable garden. Uh, we're gonna be discussing four different uh, ways that you can support the garden. And I'm also going to do a bonus um, 10 different crops that absolutely thrive in this intense summer heat, uh, regardless of these extra care things that we're gonna be discussing. Number one on the list for caring for your Florida vegetable garden in the summertime is proper irrigation. Um, watering your plants, of course, is one of the basic needs that any plant has, um, but it is especially important in our summer months. Um, we can go from miserably hot and dry to way too much rain all at once. Um, so during the summer months, irrigation is a really important thing to pay attention to. Um, one of the most important things is that you're doing it in the morning time. Um, I know not all of us are early birds, but um, setting up an auto timer or just working in those extra few minutes in the early morning is really ideal during the summer months. It nourishes um, the plants, gives them the water that they need to get through this hot steamy day, and it also allows the plants to dry out during the day. So we have super high humidity during the summer and that can lead to a lot of fungal issues. So if we're giving them time for the excess moisture that may end up on the leaves and stuff like that to dry out during the day, you're less likely to have those issues. So ideally you want to be watering in the early morning if you absolutely do not have the time in the morning, then you need to be doing it late in the day, well past um, late afternoon, ideally, um, you know, early evening or when it's dark. And that's converse to what I just said, but like I said, this is definitely secondary. You don't want to do it unless you have to. Um, but if you do it then, as opposed to midday, uh, you're actually reducing the, the water loss that the plant goes through. If you water your plants midday, they can actually lose more to evaporation than they take in through their roots. So do not water midday. Hopefully you can water in the morning. If not, do it in the late evening. The other thing to be mindful of with irrigation is to give them a nice deep soak. I have an entire separate video that goes into um, the deep water method and making sure that the soil is adequately moist and that the water is actually getting to the roots and staying there. So go ahead and check out the link above if you're interested in learning more about the deep water method. That is definitely important um, for your crops in the summer to make sure that they're actually getting the water that they need. The other thing to consider is frequency. So once the summer rains start rolling through, um, count that as a watering day. But especially when we're dry, you're gonna need to be watering at least every other day, if not every day, depending on how much you're watering and how densely your plants are, are planted. Um, it can be a lot to take on considering, you know, in the winter time, you could be watering your garden twice a week at most. Um, but with this intense heat, frequency is really helpful to the plants. If your plant is heat stressed, the leaves that you're harvesting are going to be tough. It's going to yield less fruit. Um, so putting in the effort and making sure that you have proper irrigation, um, even if it is more frequently, 
is really important in a Florida vegetable garden over the summer months. Number two on the list for taking care of your Florida vegetable garden in the summer heat is mulch. Now I just turned this bed over, removed my spring crops, um, and I'm going to be filling this bed, but I left it uncovered and unmulched to show you all the difference between unmulched soil and mulched soil. I stuck the thermometer in my mulched bed and it was um, about eight degrees cooler, eight to 10 degrees cooler than my unmulched bed. If you have four inches of mulch on top of your soil where your plants are growing, you can lower the soil temperature by a full 18 degrees. That's pretty insane. Um, so mulch goes a really long way to helping make sure that the soil ecosystem and your plant roots don't cook in the sun. Not only does it help with keeping the soil cool, it also helps you to retain moisture, which we just talked about being really important in the summer heat, as well as keeping the weeds down. So it really is a no brainer um, to have a nice, thick mulch layer on all of your beds, whether it be a living ground cover like sweet potato or cow peas. I do have a video that goes into cover crops that you can use uh, during these summer months in your Florida vegetable garden. So if you're interested in learning more about a living mulch, um, go ahead and check the link above. If you are looking for something that is um, non-living. I use a lot of leaf litter. Um, some of the larger magnolia leaves and such I will crumble up and use as the, the mulch layer. But if you don't have that around, you can also potentially use um, shredded paper. You can use um, straw. You can use grass clippings. You can use seaweed. Um, all of these are going to help keep the moisture in the soil and protect the soil from direct exposure to the sun. Number three for taking care of your Florida vegetable garden in the summer heat is using microclimates. Basically shade. These plants cannot take 14 hours of full intense hot Florida sun. It is too much for any plants. So um, using microclimates that are available to you, which in my case is a lovely magnolia tree, it shades um, six of my beds pretty well. Um, so that's what I focus my growing efforts on in the summer months, and I just cover crop the um, exterior beds. Um, you can also allow them to lay fallow. I prefer to cover crop them. But as far as the shade is concerned, fruiting vegetables can still thrive if they're getting four to six hours of summer sun. So just because it seems like it's less than the golden rule, um, I do have a video that goes in depth on how much sun a Florida vegetable garden does need. If you're interested in learning more about that, check the link above. So find those shady areas in your garden, um, find the little microclimates and utilize them. If you are planting in an area that has more sun than that, or you're planting crops that are a little bit more sensitive um, to the heat, try to offer them some afternoon shade. So having tall crops that can take the heat, like sunflowers or okra, planted to the west side of your garden bed and the more sensitive plants like Swiss chard or peppers on the east side, those tall crops will help protect and shade them from the hottest point of the day. So utilize that. Uh, you could also potentially trellis things like beans uh, or loofah gourd um, to create that shade as well. If all else fails and you don't have those planted in time or you're looking for a quick solution, you might consider using shade cloth I also have um, clients that I've worked with that have literally popped out the beach umbrella and shaded their crops um, because that's what they had available. It all works. Get them some afternoon shade and your plants will do much, much better for you.
Before we get into the 10 crops that thrive in our summer heat, uh, we have number four on the list for caring for your Florida vegetable garden in the summer heat. And that is working with the seasons. Growing in Florida allows you to grow vegetables and edibles year round, which most of the country really has to put a lot of effort into. We're very lucky here but we do need to work with the seasons. Don't fight mother nature, just work with her. Our summer is rainy and hot. So if you're looking for a bean or a protein crop, instead of planting traditional green beans, try planting things like yard long beans or cow peas for a protein and a bean that thrives in our warm, hot, muggy summers. Tomatoes are another great example. Um, tomatoes typically don't set fruit above 80 degrees. The blossoms will just drop off. The plant doesn't mind it, but you won't get any fruit. I do have a video that goes in depth on this, so if you're interested in learning more about that, click the link above. We have the Everglades tomato, which does take the heat much better than most tomatoes, but like this one, for example, is from my spring crop. It's actually from my last fall crop that's still going. As tempting as it may be to leave the plant in because it's kind of still producing, don't. You're way more likely to get pest infestation and if it harbors those pests, they will be able to complete their life cycle and then come fall when you plant the tomatoes again, you're already gonna have those pests in the system. So once you get to the point of your plant not producing well for you or it's outside of its typical range, it is a good idea to still pull that plant out to reduce the likelihood of having issues with pests later. I do have a Florida vegetable seed club that sends out three varieties of in-season organic heirloom vegetables to your door once a month. It's a really great way to get a handle on the seasons. If you're interested in learning more about that, head on down to the show notes below and I have a link that will tell you all about how to join the Florida Vegetable Seed Club community. The first crop I'd like to cover for Florida vegetable gardens in the summer heat is amaranth. As you all know, I'm a huge leafy green fan and this one is just amazing. It's better known for its quinoa-like green, but the leaves are edible. The young ones are nice and tender for salads, and the large ones can be used for cooking. Great crop for your summer vegetable garden. Peppers do great in our summers, especially hot peppers, although you can do sweet peppers as well if you pick appropriate varieties. Um, this is a perennial uh, sweet pepper called arroz con pollo um, and it does absolutely wonderful uh, here in the summertime. I would suggest offering pepper plants a little bit of afternoon shade as they are a little bit sensitive to that intense afternoon summer heat. The yard long bean is a wonderful protein source that I mentioned earlier for growing in the summer heat. It just keeps on going. You might see the occasional aphid problem, um, which would need your assistance to manage, but in general, they just kind of do their thing and chug along in the intense, intense heat and humidity. You'll also see next to no issues with um, fungal. They are very, very resilient when it comes to the fungal and humidity issues. Here we have okra. Okra is well known for being a summer crop here in Florida. It does uh, exceedingly well in the temperatures. It can take full sun and can even offer some shade to more sensitive crops. Chaya is a perennial leafy green that grows great here in Florida. Um, it does grow year round because it's a perennial, but most importantly, it thrives in our summer heat. 
this gets next to no water and as you can see I just planted these and I've got all sorts of new growth and they are really holding strong. We have the sunflowers here, mammoth sunflowers um, with tithonia which is a Mexican sunflower. Sunflowers do great planted all summer long. Um, they can take the heat no problem as long as you give them adequate water. I have a few here that are just about spent, but I have plenty more coming in soon. The pollinators love them, the birds love them, I love them, and they're a food crop. I just got these lima beans in earlier in the week and you can already see them reaching for the stars. Um, they are going to be climbing this chain link fence Lima beans can take the heat um, better than many other traditional green bean crops. So if you do want to put some beans in, um, lima beans could be a great option for you. I planted these sweet potatoes here from slips that I made myself uh, probably three weeks ago and you can already see it taking off. Um, it's planted into my banana circle and they are loving the heat. They'll provide excellent ground cover to help retain moisture over the summer months. If you want to learn more about growing sweet potatoes, I do have an entire playlist dedicated solely to sweet potatoes, um, so check out the link above. Eggplant do fantastic in our summer heat. Um, I do have a video that discusses more about them being a potential perennial in our climate. If you're wanting to know more about that, check out the link above. Needless to say, the eggplant will do fantastic over the summer months. The last crop that I would like to talk to you all about is loofah. I have done an entire video on growing loofah gourds here in Florida. They do absolutely phenomenal in the summer. If you're interested in a full in-depth video on this one, make sure to check out the link above. I hope you all found this video helpful on how to care for your Florida vegetable garden in intense summer heat. Irrigation, mulch, shade, and seasons are all really, really important factors. Hopefully you'll also be able to get some of those crops that we mentioned um, in the ground so that you can still harvest edibles all through our summer months. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And while you're down there, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it so you're alerted every time a new video comes out on Florida-based vegetable gardening. Stay cool.